All right, y'all, y'all see it. So we coming out the hotel, and look what my man just pulled up in, bro. Look what my man just pulled up in, bro. What is this? Yo, that shit is on bags, too? So you could drop it down? Oh, that's crazy. Look at this shit dropping. Wow. And it's a diesel, bro. It's a 3500. I don't even, the suspension on here is ridiculous. Ridiculous. American force wheels with the spikes and everything. Yo, this is crazy. I don't even know about trucks, but I know this is crazy. I'm in the zone. Give me the game. One shot, that's all that you got. That's all that I know. Turn on the gas. 155 on the road. Yo, we inside the big 3500 big boy. Bro, you gotta drop this down. It's riding hard as hell. Yeah, you gotta drop it down some. He got the, the suspension extended all the way up. Yo, but this is nasty, bro. Look at all of this, man. And the thing is, it's still a nice vehicle. Nah, this is fire, bro. This is definitely fire. I like this a lot. So, what year is this? 18 ram 3500 so it got the big u connect it got everything in it this is fire bro i can't wait to show it to y'all when it get dark out and you can see all the lights Ooh. bro we just got to the restaurant and it, i just had to get out of that shit. yo this shit is so high it's crazy. We pulling up to the valet right now. Y'all see all the lights on underneath? This is different, different. We doing a little fine dine in the night, you know what I mean? It's crazy you pull up in this and you got the, the crazy, yo, the valet is smiling ear to ear for this. But you got, you know, the crazy 180 SL, you feel? You know what I mean? Aston truck, you know, not some light, Phantom. You know what I'm saying? New Mercedes EQ. My God, this truck is nasty, bro. Look, he gotta make like two U-turns to get it to turn around. Yo, this is crazy. Anyway, let's go inside. Let's go eat, boys. Come in to Eddie V's, you feel? Little steak and seafood. <laughs> All right, yo, appreciate it, bro. Appreciate the ride, dinner, all that. You see, man, this thing. Bro, I think I'm in love, fellas. I think I'm about to move down here, move to Florida just for that. Golly, that thing is huge. It's probably gonna take like an 80 million point turn to get out of here with that. Oh my gosh. That shit is crazy. Good morning, everybody. We are back. It's another day, man. And that's right. Y'all see it. We still got Big Red out here. Hello. Hi. Good to see you. Like Pleasure. That. Look, so we got Big Red out here. You guys, don't. I don't know if you remember or don't remember, but Big Red is part of my guy Anthony's dealer down here in Orlando, Florida called Tropical Auto Outlet. I'm around the back right now. All the fly cars is in the front, but these are the type of cars that he can get. But today, I have some running around to do. I gotta. I have some meetings down here. You know what I'm saying? I gotta go see my boys at Diablo Sport. I gotta go see my guys at Exineering. And Anthony is gonna lend me a car. And I'm gonna show you the car that he's lending me. It's such a perfect fit. All right, come on. One thing y'all should remember is opening these doors right here and the last time we opened these doors right here what was sitting right there was our dodge charger that we purchased and gave away um, i don't know if you remember big perp that was only what a month six weeks ago that we gave away a wide body dodge charger rt we bought it completely stock 
and it was sitting right here. They really take care of me. These, this is family for me, man. So if you guys ever need anything, you want to buy your next whatever car, it doesn't matter. Obviously, they, you see they have absolutely everything. It's Maserati's outside and C8 Corvettes for everything, 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 everything. This is the fam right here, man, and they'll take care of you financing all of that so the big boss is he's never really in here but that's the big boss so y'all know behind the scenes big boss all right y'all so here out front bro i could take any one of these cars i could take the keys to any one of these cars that i decide that i want and even more fly cars on the side but come on man yeah boy y'all know what i'm about to be riding in now i guarantee you this is somebody's car that we all must know or whatever I'm gonna look for the Instagram logo somewhere on it. Somebody traded in a scat and they traded it in like this. Lowered, 20 inch wheels, tire stickers, front splitter, duck bill spoiler. This is fire. This joint look good. Rear diffuser, rear diffuser on it. All of that. Light decals, making sure you know, scat pack, you feel? so. I'm about to spend the whole day with the Scat Pack guys. We about to have a, a, a good time, man, for all my Scat Pack dudes. You feel? I'm about to rep for y'all heavy today, man. And, you know, spending the day with it, I'm going to be able to give you my full impression. So, you know, I had the RT charger. So, I got a chance to rep for y'all, the RT dudes. But today, we repping for the Scat Pack dudes here, fun in the sun. But what we about to do now, you know the vibes. You know what we about to do now. Oh, this got the stars in the roof. I see the beam. Or oh, it got light, either one. No, 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 this is, I don't think this is the stars in the roof. Let me see. Yeah, man. Yo, yo, fire it up for me. We gotta give him that cold start. Get, uh, I, don't have I think it's in there. He took it with him? Yeah, he took it, he has it. Oh, he took it with him? Yeah, yeah. He just walked away. All right, yo, let me get this key and get y'all this cold start. All right, y'all, let's get this mother effing cold start going. They got more than a mid muffler delete because this sound nasty, boy. I wonder what this remote is for. What lights this do? The headlights or the tail lights? It must be the headlights. Let's see. Hold on. This definitely controls something. Maybe it got lights underneath the car. That's probably what it is. I gotta go into like a garage so we can see it's too much daylight right now. But anyway, the, this is the type of cars you could buy here, bro. And bro, imagine that, right? Imagine the fact that you like, yo, I wanna scat. And when I buy my scat, I want to lower it. I want to put wheels. I want to put exhaust. I want to put lighting. Bro, it's already done. It is already done. You just call up Tropical Auto Outlet. Come pick this up from anywhere in the country. And they can ship it to you. Pumba! All right, boys. So here we are in the big scat. Already put the traction on sport. Can somebody please explain to me what this is? Super track pack oh man that's that sounds serious you know what i'm saying y'all know i don't know about no nothing about no scat so i don't know nothing about no super track pack and all that that's fire but yo this thing continue sounds, on florida 417 till north for one mile so good, bro. oh man yo this is bro to have this for every day <laughs> yo, this is fire. But you know we gotta get on the highway. So you know, let's see, let's see what's good. Let's see what's good. Half a mile. Keep left. Oh, let's slow it down. Let's slow it down, baby. Let's slow it down. Let's slow it down. Hold on. I think I made the caddy bag. He came back up at me. He closed these windows though, so y'all can hear me. It pick up nice, bro, for daily driving purposes, bro. This is fire. And you can just chill, let it go down in the gears, and you can relax. 75 miles, let me see. 75 miles an hour, just chilling. I ain't gonna hold you, yo. I like the roads. Y'all roads down here in Florida just open. Bro, I would get mad speeding tickets because it's just open out here, bro. The sound, everything is... Big scat energy, boy. I'm feeling this, man. I'm 
feeling this. Like, uh, like in a, like, I think I need a 392 Durango. It's just the way that it's all set up. Like, it's set up a lot like the Hellcat. Like, the, you could tell the gear ratios, everything. It's set up very similarly. It just doesn't have the, the extra, you know, 200 horsepower or whatever. But the setup is very similar. I think there might be a cop back there, so I got to chill. Is it? Nah, it's not a cop. We good. All right, let's do a quick 60 roll. Now, this thing don't have no uh, no good tires on it, so we're not going to go to, to second. Because that's what you would usually go to. But All right, so you next to somebody. One, two. Nice, little 60 to 100, you know what I'm saying? Nothing crazy. Man, this is this is, this is is good for daily purposes, bro. This is good right here, bro. It's fun, definitely fun, man. Big, big scat, I'm feeling it. <laughs> All right, man, uh, let me get to where I'm going. Um, I gotta go to some meetings and stuff. I'm taking y'all with me. We'll get back to more scat talk later. Yo, I'm not gonna lie to y'all, bro. This sh sound better than my Hellcat. <laughs> the turbos really muffle sound. God, yo, this shit sound crazy. I just love the way, like, you can play with it. You ain't even got to go fast to play with it. You know what I'm saying? Just... In a quarter mile, use the left two lanes to turn left onto Snow Hill Road. Oh, my God. Yo, and I'm driving it like a stick, letting off between the shifts, and the exhaust is like... <laughs> Use the left two lanes to turn left the onto Snow Hill Road. So crispy, bro. I think that first pull that I did from 60, I don't even think it was in sport mode, bro. <laughs> I don't even think it was in sport for that one. Oh, man, I'm getting bad, like, really, really, like, things I shouldn't be thinking. Bad thoughts, man. Driving this car. This is dangerous for me. You shouldn't put me in cars that one I could afford to add to the collection and two that I'm gonna have a lot of fun with and it's both of those god damn I gotta get that to y'all one more time that little that little stick shift style well, let's crack the windows hold on uh, continue on snow hill road for two miles first meeting boys our first meeting of the day and what do we have over there wow is that what i think it is yes it is that is a hummer h2 it is a hummer h2 over there boys wow look at that and then welcome welcome to you boys see it you boys see it exineering uh, you guys see it man we made it here to our friends at x nearing and uh yeah let's go say hello oh man this is pretty cool it's pretty cool when you see people that can build hold their property is big enough to build whole businesses outside of their properties whoa look what they have a s oh my god guys you don't understand how expensive these things are this is a whole racing simulator. This is a whole racing simulator here. All of these screens turn on and you can literally. What's up, brother? Hey, man. What's going on, Max? Welcome out to the dude. Thank you. Appreciate it. I was just telling them, you know, Florida, when you, you could have a whole property that has enough space right. to put a whole shop on it. Yeah, that was the vision. Man, this is really yeah. cool, man. I was just telling them about your uh, your simulator over there. Yeah, that's the that's the big one. That has three uh, motion actuators. Yep. It pitches, rolls, has rear traction loss simulation. Yep. 
Uh, it's got two subwoofers, two bass shakers, uh, Harman Kardon surround sound, 350 inch monitors. Uh, it'll rattle, oh, rattle oh. your teeth out. Yeah. All right, man. So you guys are not a race simulator company, obviously. No. This is just your toy. That's right. Yeah. Well, we actually <laughs> had a couple of uh, dirt track racers come borrow. We have another simulator inside that runs iRacing. This one runs our factor. They come in, they do remote coaching ses sessions for guys all over the country. Yep. Uh, and then they also, we put them on road race stuff with like 20 cars on track on Sebring and really just run the crap out of them. Wow. So, so what is Exineering? Exineering is a design engineering firm. We design electronics, hardware, software. Um, pretty much if any company has like a whiteboard of ideas and they're like, man, it'd be really cool if we had that and that and that, they come to us and we make it. A lot of the stuff gets private labeled. We sell, we're, we're behind the scenes on a lot of stuff. On a lot of big projects. Yeah. A lot of projects that we can't reveal, guys, because they are behind the scenes. But yeah. this is an example of something that they've done. Yeah. This right here is Exineering, Exineering C6 Z06. Yeah. That was once owned by Jeremy from Faster Proms, right? Yeah, correct. Okay. Yeah. And now this car is, you race this car heavy. Yeah, yeah, we do as many. We use it to R&D most of our development platforms for sequential transmission electronics, paddle shift, um, whoa, 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 whoa! Back up, back up! You use this car to develop sequential, so that means this car has a what? This car has a sequential transmission. Uh, it's a PPG gearbox. So we took out the synchro gear set, put in the dog ring sequential set. Uh, this one is actually equipped with both a push pull load cell shifter and a pneumatic actuated paddle shifter. So pardon the mess, no consoles. Um, and we actually just got back from Sebring. Did a whole track day testing the paddle shift system running on a CO2 bottle. And we got... So we got, remember, I think you're going way too fast, right? I think people are still mind blown at the fact that this car is a C6Z06 that, you know, all C6Z06s guys are manual transmission cars. Yep. They come standard with it. Does this car come with a 6060 or a T56? This one is an 07, so it came with the T56. So these cars came with a Tremec T56 transmission, which has now been removed. And in its place, what was added was uh, a PPG sequential transmission. What that means is that it shifts gears and sequential just means if you ever rode a motorcycle, then you know it's just the transmissions don't go, you can't skip gears. It only goes through one, two, three, four, five, six, and so on and so forth. So, wow, you got the gear indicator, right? So that's mind blowing enough. Right. The fact that you have this setup in this car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's what takes it another step further is the fact that you've added paddle shifters. Yeah, this is full uh, pneumatic actuated paddle shifted. Right now, there's <gasps> no pressure in the bottle. Oh my god, I just heard it though. Yeah, I heard it. So, this right here is built by Motec. This is a Motec actuator that they they get from somebody. I mean, Hollinger runs them, a bunch of different companies run them. And then a lot of different companies make pneumatic actuators with the solenoids built in. So it runs a single airline in, and it's got an upshift and a downshift for push and pull. We have a... So this actuator mm -hmm. can push the shifter, mm -hmm. I don't know if you guys can see that, but up and down. Yep. So this is kind of a unique situation. Most people would take this actuator, put it under the car, and it wouldn't be also push-pull. But we develop, we have a load cell sensor in here which we'll talk about later. Um, so we can do spark cuts and throttle blips based on pushes and pulls. Now I just seen something light up down here when you did that. Yeah, so there's a, this indicates a spark cut on the- <laughs> Do that again, do that again. So that's downshift, spark cut, upshift, spark cut. But what down here flashed? So that's the drive-by wire circuit that runs the throttle blip on downshift. Do it again? Y'all see that? And that's, oh. that's 100 milliseconds. You have it 100 the, millisecond delay. the exact time it takes the shift barrel to move from one gear to the next. It's all closed loop based on gear position. So if you shift slow, it'll blip slow. If you shift fast, it'll cut and blip fast. As low as 100 milliseconds. Yeah, we have timeouts so that you're not going to wait forever to cut the power to the engine. Oh my God. But. This and is, then this runs on CO2. So yeah, right now we have, so we got push-pull load cell. That's spark cuts, throttle blips based on these actions. 
Then we got paddle shift, down shift, up shift with spark cuts and throttle blips. We got two different air systems that we're testing. One is a compressor with an accumulator and the other is a standalone CO2 bottle that gets regulated down to the proper pressure for this actuator. Mm -hmm. And we got all this running for R&D. So we can develop all different kinds of calibrations and firmware for our modules that control all this stuff. And then get it to different customers in different configurations depending on what they want. This is, <laughs> it's uh, much. guys, you hear me silent because <laughs> this is a lot. Yeah, this, this, this is a lot of information to take in. And this will explain it. So this is the bottle, open the bottle, just like nitrous, right? Yep. You hear it? Yeah, I heard it. So right now we kind of got the dog rings lined up so it can shift through the gears, but look at this. <gasps> Do it again. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> yeah. Yo, that shit is crazy! Yeah. You notice the spark cut LED, it's doing its thing. So spark cut happens, it loads up the gear, and then it completes the shift. And likewise on the downshift, see the blue LED for the blip. All clutchless. You never touch the clutch. So we got some clips coming um, of this running around Bruh. Sebring. <laughs> oh my gosh! Yeah. Oh my gosh, this right here, you have made a car that was developed for 2000, in 2006. Yeah. You have made it do what F1 race cars yeah, do. It's, it's it's world class, man, and it's it's crazy. It's smiles per mile. I love a C6. Oh, C6 Z06 is best bang for the buck, period. So that was gonna be my next thing. Yeah. I love a C6 Z06. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then of course the halo of them all, mm -hmm. the C6 ZR1. Right. But this right here, I mean, I made like a couple videos on these cars and every time I do is euphoric. Mm -hmm. Like just, it's so well balanced. Right. It's right. The power uh, for weight, mm -hmm. the distribution, the way it delivers the power yeah. is, but the, I can't imagine what this is like. Yeah, the technology in this car, I mean, the balsa wood floors, the carbon fiber fenders, the LS7, the dry sump. I mean, it was way ahead of its time. Way ahead way of its ahead. time. Way ahead. Listen, yeah. this is absolutely amazing, but this is level 300. <laughs> okay, I'm not here, guys, to talk about doing this to my car. This is way out of my league. However, I might have a project yeah. for someone else with a lot more money than me <laughs> who we might be talking about today. Yeah. All right, uh, but this is absolutely amazing. All yeah. right, come on, let's go inside. All right. All right, guys, so right now we're in the lab, so this is top secret. So what I have to do is keep it tight on Max because you guys can't see some of the things that's happening in the background. So Max, right now, pretty much all they can see is you. And what was your name again, brother? Will. And they can see Will in the background a little bit. Will, I don't know what you got on your computer screen, but put it to your home screen. <laughs> put it to your home screen, brother. We don't want to give away no uh, top secrets. Okay, so Exineering, the way that I found this company is because as you guys know, I put a dog box in my car, uh, but to make a dog box function, that's good, you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I was like, what is that? Uh, you can make a uh, dog, the, the way that that sequential shifter works is, it has a very similar gear set to what I have in my car now with the dog ring gears and all that. But to take advantage of doing anything uh, clutchless, you have to find a way to stop the power on the shift, right? So I was wrecking my brain, wrecking my brain. Then I hit up drag on tuning. Um, you know my guy, Brian, obviously he's a tuner of my car and it hit him like a ton of bricks. He was like, wait, Max. So he referred me to Max. At the time I'm at TX2K and I'm in my Airbnb and I'm trying to hunt Max down. Max, I got an idea. Max, I got an idea. He gets back to me. Me and him end up, and me and him end up, end up talking for like an hour, yeah. because you know we're both just really strong car guys. He's just a really, really, really smart car guy. Um, the reason why my car works so well now is because me, I don't give up. Um, I'm very persistent. Uh, when I, I'm like a dog with a bone. When I want something, I figure out how to get it done. And I work with really smart people. So Brian, as you know, really smart guy. Um, everybody that is trying to do twin turbo builds on stock computer Hellcats are having the worlds of trouble. Uh, mine functions, works. It's amazing. You know what I mean? 
it's plug and play, man. I'm. It took a while. I broke a lot of shit to get there, but we're there now. And I gotta give a lot of credit to people like you know uh, Dragon Tuning and Diablo Sport and G Force and uh, Comp Turbo and you know the the whole combination. I got and then of course Intrac, the the shop that does it all. But uh, what did we start talking about? Why did Brian refer me to you? Yeah, so one of our bread and butter products that we're I don't know I want to say the best is the ability to sense driver motion either through a sequential shifter uh h pattern load cell whatever it is so that we can reduce the torque required to unload the dog rings to allow a ratcheting action to unload one gear and reload the next gear and that symphony that happens has to be precise on the cut and the torque recovery and we've developed some hardware that works with just about any shifter configuration any transmission configuration on the market to let that happen. Uh, having the dog rings and the H pattern has a challenge in that you have to put a sensor to be able to understand when you're pushing and pulling in and out of gears mechanically so that you can cut that spark. And that's kind of where we're starting. Okay. And what do you guys have that does that learning and knowledge What and tells the car? Like, what do you have? Yeah. So, for example, on the sequential car, we have a linear load cell that changes voltage as you push and pull on it. So we know whether you're downshifting to where we initiate a cut and a throttle blip to rev match that gear or cut on the upshift. And those load cell sensors that are in the shifter, we can translate those to H pattern and put like a parameter around the idle voltage okay. so that when you push and pull, we cut spark. Right, so, but what is doing that? What's cutting oh, yeah, spark? But, what is what is controlling all of that? Yeah, we have a module called the gearbox control unit, GCU for short. So it's like ECU, but GCU. Gearbox controls, and that's what you see Fire. on the side of the car. It says gearbox controls by X and um, We can do it for H patterns, you know, all, all kinds of different cars. Sequentials we've been doing since like 2012, and every variation you can imagine. And also to get power shift to work, you need the proper time cuts, torque recoveries, blips. All that stuff comes off of a paddle instead of a shifter. And your GCU unit uh, is, I'm assuming, fully programmable. Right. So that, that can, can it log? Can it see like? Yeah. So we have live data logging for the gear position sensor, the load cell sensor um, versus time. And then it's all uh, calibratable by the user, USB programmable. Um, we designed the hardware, the firmware, the software all in house here, the enclosures, the wiring harnesses. We provide the end user with almost a completely plug and play system. And we work with transmission manufacturers. We get their wiring schematics. So when they order a certain transmission with a certain GCU, all they have to hook is power and ground. And we come with a base calibration and then their race engineers can make adjustments or garage mechanic guy. There's only about 10 parameters that make this thing function. Yeah. And they're very understandable. Okay. We make the graphs really easy. Um, so what we're doing here today, boys, that's right, you guessed it. We are going to work with Exineering to figure out how to get my uh, dog box transmission to function like his sequential in that it will allow me to shift without a clutch. As of right now, um, I use what is closer to a Band-Aid, right? right? I use a Watt box. Mm -hmm. um, it's great mm -hmm. at the, the basic level. Right, because it's like a rudimentary way. It cuts the timing um, and then gives it back all at once immediately, right? right? Mm -hmm. So what I find though, when at the power level that I'm at, right. at 400 horsepower, 500, 600, 700 horsepower, that process is smooth. Mm -hmm. My car at 1200, when I do that, it's violent. The editors will bleep that out, but <laughs> I needed to say that like it is. Absolutely. When that power comes back, I you can see it on my draggy graphs that it hits hard yeah. when it comes back because it doesn't cut any boost. It only cuts timing, right? So something needs to ramp back in the time and a little slower right. so it could be more progressive, right? Because you got to think it's also shocking the tire. Oh, yeah. Every time I every time I do that, it shocks the tire. Even a cut. Like everything is like, so it's like when I shift, it's like boom, boom, right. boom, boom. Everything is like boom. And I know that cannot be good right. 
right. for uh, you know your application heavy torque heavy car um the reason we had to evolve our system is because of the dodge viper a lot of our gcus are in dodge viper road race cars yeah and that v10 coming off and on required us to build in a very sophisticated torque recovery system right, right. and the road race guys that are using it are like this it's night and day yeah so. i can feel it man i can absolutely feel it so uh let me check out some of these units guys i'll uh i'll put a little uh montage together for you guys so you can see what the units look like but i'm excited to jump in and learn, learn a lot more All right, guys, so I hope you guys enjoyed that montage, but what I ended with was this right here. This is the company model. This is what they live by. Service first, whatever it takes. Excellence is our standard. Always do the right thing, which is huge. Team over one. There's no one person. There's no I in team. Positive impact every single day. A lot of companies need to rip this off of their wall and put it on the wall in their companies because this right here a lot of companies can learn from yeah boys so just like that man we're back in the shop and listen we haven't done it yet we're in a process it's going to take us some time guys we're going to dial it in but uh modern fame is going to bring you another first for the mopar community because i would be the first challenger right to uh to to fully run one of these systems uh now all of you don't have dog ring gears. Most of these cars come with uh, synchro transmissions, meaning the stock transmission, guys, what I'm saying. Uh, we can still apply your auto blip downshifts mm -hmm. and auto blip upshifts, right? Yeah, so it's spark cut on the upshifts and rev matching on the downshifts. Right. Uh, on a regular synchro car based on the pedal presses. Yes. And we make we make module downshift blip modules. Yep. Um, and then we also make spark cut modules. Well, now we got one just like the sequential car, and it's actually installed on this Miata that does spark cuts based on the clutch press. So if you clutch in slow and out slow, it'll cut slow. If you do it quick, it'll cut quick. And that's a huge, that's a game changer, guys, between the uh, Watt Box and what you guys do. Now the Watt Box obviously is two hundred dollars. And it only cuts when you're like racing. It doesn't do yeah. downshifts. Why do you want downshifts? Well, guys, unfortunately, Mopar never gave us what Chevy gave their guys. Chevy guys, you know, when they're at the track or even going from light to light, it's, it's nothing more fun than clutching in under the brake and a car goes, what the what the what the like perfectly. This is going to be absolutely amazing. So it's going to be worth every dollar. Now, if you're a drag racer, um, X engineering does not do uh, two step and all that kind of stuff. So you're still going to need some my, my man, <laughs> my man. So you might still need a solution like that. But specifically, if you just want the most out of your stick shift Mopar, a lot of us have problems when trying to shift two to three or sometimes four to five uh under full load i'm telling you get one of these units and it'll take care of all of that for you it it smooths it out so much and all you have to train your brain to do is stay on the gas that's it but guys i'm about to get out of here man uh we got a few more meetings to run around in they love the guys over here they love the charger 
the scat pack man they was like this thing is badass and it is it's a good looking car another reason why god i'm having bad thoughts yeah buddy and our tour continues man you don't know how many companies is based in florida really big companies aka i bet you didn't know that holly had a branch in florida um, but i don't know if a lot of you know this i run diablo sport diablo sport is owned by holly so any building any facility any of that goes to holiday they own that super chips uh dining apr edge so holly pretty much touches every brand of vehicle for that reason that being said we came to see him with the big scat energy you heard but guys i don't want to make this video too 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 long all i really want to know is what do you think what do you think should i you know the bad thoughts i've been talking about should i act on them should i buy this dodge charger scat pack already modified ready to go and if i do what should i do when i'm ready to make another change in a couple months i'm thinking and you guys tell me in the comments if i buy this if i decide to give it away would you enter the giveaway a lot of you entered the giveaway for big perp if i buy this car for one of you would you enter the, the giveaway would you spend 25 to 30 bucks pretty much buying a t-shirt or anything like that so that you could have the potential of winning one of these these cars are getting super expensive on the used car market it would cost me a pretty penny to buy it um, i'm going to talk to anthony about it in the next video uh, when i see him tomorrow i'm going to ask him how much could he give me this car for and if the number is not too crazy should i just might drive it back and cancel my flight anyway guys i hope you like this video if you like this video you know what to do like subscribe share hit that bell notification so you don't miss no more videos going forward please drop in the comments right now let's get this video to twenty thousand. this video gets to 20 to twenty five thousand views i'm sorry i'm bugging it's gonna do that already <laughs> let's get it let's get this video to uh five thousand likes we get this video to five thousand likes Bro, I might have to make a bad decision, man. Let's get it done. Anyway, see y'all in the next one. We out. We out.